Hey loved ones, it's love. So I want to talk to you today about my transition and my thought process um, that led me to start transitioning, I guess. So I didn't have the luxury of transitioning when I was a youth uh, or a teenager uh, that so many of you uh, have and are doing right now. So kudos to you. I didn't have any role models or anybody on television saying, oh, okay. So that's a possibility. So I didn't know anything about this life um, or, tr or transgender people until I got to college. Wait, I'm lying. I saw my first uh, transgender person. I was in high school and I had snuck out to go to the club and to the gay bar. I was gay. I, when I was growing up, I was, um, a gay, I was a gay. A gay? <laughs> I was gay. Um, then I transitioned into being um, the woman that I am and that you see here before you today. But I didn't have the luxury of transitioning at an early age. So there were no role models. Um, I did see uh, a couple of transgender people and transgender uh, was not a term then. I think they were transsexuals or trannies back then. Um, but they were outside of the club that I was coming out of. It was a gay bar. So they were outside of the club and I was like, oh, okay, well. <laughs> They're cute, mind you, but okay, I didn't, uh, okay, that was a possibility. Um, but my whole point of making this uh, film or this video is to give hope uh, to people, um, especially to the gays and the youth and our transgender sisters. I grew up in a Christian household, so much so, um, I'm sure my grandmother thought, my grandmother raised me, by the way, um, and I called her mama. I'm sure my mama thought that I was going to be a deacon or, or a preacher or something like that, or a teacher or some, something along the lines in, uh, in the church. I was a Sunday school teacher. Um, I sang in a choir. I, I led devotion. Like, it was that deep. Like, seriously, <laughs> for real. It was that deep. So when I was starting to think about uh, transitioning, and pondering, okay, well, is that, am I going to go to hell? Or, or is that going to be like the ultimate slap in God's face? There was um, a scripture that came out uh, to me. It was really prevalent. It was um, this earthly house or body. I have it here on my tablet. Excuse me. It's uh, 2 Corinthians 5 chapter and first verse for we know that if this earthly tent we live in is destroyed we have a building from God an eternal house um, a, 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 an eternal body so that's bumpy in the background you guys saw him on the last film what that revealed to me is that no matter what I do to my body no matter how I alter it that God isn't coming back for my body. He's not coming back for this earthly shell. He's coming back for my soul. And if he's coming back for my soul, then to me, that just sent off a, a light bulb like, okay, well, I'm good as long as I do right by myself and do right by people and do right by him, then I'm fine. And that just opened up Pandora's box for me. It really did. Um, after that revelation, I went home and I talked with my mama about the decisions that I was going to make because first off I didn't want to do anything that was going to embarrass her I didn't want to do anything that was going to embarrass my family or bring shame to my family and her being the person that she was just gave me we were in our, in our dining room table um, to having this heart to heart and I told her that I wanted to be a woman and of course she was a bit taken aback at first um, but what she told me was that you can't live your life talking to me. This is her talking to me. You can't live your life for anybody else, baby. You have to live this life for yourself. Nobody else is going to take this walk of this journey for you. You have to do it yourself. Um, so that was the okay that I needed to begin my transition. And I know a lot of um, my friends are struggling, especially the 
for those of us who grew up in the church with how is God going to see you? How is God going to see the life that you're living? Hey, he created you and he made you. And with that scripture, he's not coming back for your body. He's coming back for what's in your body. He's coming back for that soul. And as long as your soul is right, you're fine. Trust and believe, you're fine. Um, but that was what I wanted to talk about today. I know that my gay child, and I love him dearly, Damier, he was having a struggle with that inner, well, he was having that inner struggle of being gay and because he's, he's a church uh, kid too, uh, of being gay or suppressing, suppressing those emotions and just living life, I guess, not stealthily, but not even having, being in tune to those gay uh, feelings or emotions or him. Um, and I had, to, I had to let him know that same scripture that worked for me um, is evident for him. And again, you have to live this life for yourself no matter what or who is going to say what about your life. Again, as long as you're not hurting anybody else, as long as you're um, not breaking any of the, the commandments, you're fine. God is coming back for your soul, not for your implants or your nose job or having your braces on your teeth. You know, he's not worried or concerned about all that. He's concerned about you and how you live. Um, but yeah, that's what I wanted to talk to you today about um, yeah, that's one of the things that I had to struggle with and deal with uh, before I made my decision to transition being a church kid. So know that you're loved. Know that you're loved.